treatment, Scott was so unresponsive to others that his parents feared he was blind and deaf. He didn't speak. He didn't play with toys or peers. His self-stimulatory behaviors included lining objects in neat rows and body rocking for long periods of time. With intensive treatment, Scott's IQ rose to the normal range. This is Robert, age three. He refuses to make eye contact, a key sign of autism. Come here, Bobby. Come here. He appears cut off from the outside world. Bobby. He's preoccupied with repetitive play, characteristic of autistic children, and he has no speech. This is the first time mother and son have seen these images of themselves. It's pretty crazy. But we made it. Back in those days, what, what problems did Robert have? What sort of problems? He would um, rock himself and then he would hit his head against the wall in his crib. He would kind of jump up and, and hit his head on the wall and just do that repeatedly. And then um, I began to hear that some children with autism would wear helmets, you know, to prevent, um, I guess, brain damage or whatever. But um, so I kept him out of the crib as much as I could at that point. And he had other behaviors. Um, um, moving his head back and forth with his hand in front of his face and making this croaking noise and... Repetitive behavior. Mm, oh, yeah. He would sit and do it and do it. I mean, I really don't remember hardly any of it. I mean, I remember a few people and a few things, but, I mean, it's just... To me, it seemed like it was just like a place that I was going to go do things. I mean, it's almost like school, you know? So mm -hmm. it doesn't really register that much, and I don't remember feeling any different or anything like that, so I mean, it was just a stage in life. This is Scott, 10 years after treatment. It looks like you're about ready for a haircut. No, you don't think so. Sure, compared to the way David <laughs> Well, yeah, I know, but look how David looks. Hey, you know, you're not the best looking for huh? something. We're over, he has nice hair, though. Yeah, well, yeah, he does have nice hair. The rest of the girls would like it an awful lot better. It took it six months to get the way it is now. Well, yeah, I know, but you're young. You're going to live another six months, I, I would think, don't you? Yeah. Hmm? You're you taking me back to the butcher over How there. How come? Yeah. Not the butcher. Uh, now no. you don't want to go see the butcher. <sighs> I think he almost cut my ears off. Nah, you know, he needs to practice. Probably we better go back. <sighs> sure. Nah. Back when your dad was a kid. That's the way they used to wear that. I hair, saw a huh? picture of you when you were my age. Yeah, how do you like your haircut? Did you trim? Uh, I did it, uh, which was all above the ears and above the collar, so cutting up to about that. OK, you want it cloth, or are you going to have it square? He joined the search and rescue with a friend of his, and uh, his friend, his father, is a paramedic down there, and uh, next week is his first meeting, and they require him to have a short hair. Uh, oh, thank you. Now he's starting to play football for uh, high school, so he's pretty interested in that. Have you thought about electronics as a field you might be interested in? Yeah, I've thought about it. I might take a couple of classes at city or state because I might want to play football for Long Beach State. I don't think I'm probably going to be good enough to play for a big university. So far, what do you like most about high school? I love playing football for it and looking at the girls. Would you like to see an immersive? I don't have. You haven't got any hair. The desert, Robert Smith prepares for the night shift. He was one of nine children to completely overcome their autism in Dr. Lovis's 1970s research study. Now he makes $50,000 a year as a glazier, the same as a year's worth of ABA. Now California is ready to back ABA for every autistic child, at least for a trial. The hope is that many more, like Robert, will recover.